Hi, welcome back to Future Fast. And once again, we have Dr. Pratibha Singh with us. And uh, before we get into the conversation, I hope you have uh, enjoyed the conversation we've had uh, about her journey. And for those of you who are here for the first time, I urge you, please go catch up with her journey. Then you'll be able to connect where we're going from here on. So it would be easy for you to understand her background. And uh, the last thing is, if you have not yet subscribed to Future Fast, do it right now. With that, Pratibha, thank you so much and welcome back to Future Fast. Hi, thank you for having me here. So I'll, I'll, I'll just... I really enjoyed our conversation about the journey, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to the session of it. <laughs> Wonderful. So why preview? What do you do at preview and why the need for preview now? So preview is an AI-enabled uh, platform for preventive health care. That's why the name preview. And um, so I think to an extent, the why is in the name itself. Uh, it's uh, preventive health care. A lot of the diseases that are the major killers globally and in India are um, lifestyle associated. They're highly preventable, right? And only if we're aware of what is it that we are doing and how that is impacting our lives, our health, will we be a little more proactive about being healthier, right? Changing those habits that are detrimental to us. So, uh, so preview is more for raising awareness, uh, making that information accessible, making those resources accessible, to the public at large so that they can avoid getting, you know, challenged by these diseases. So the chronic diseases, uh, as they, as these are called, they're also called non-communicable diseases. So they're not infectious diseases, uh, like your tuberculosis and leishmaniasis and Kalazar and all of these. Uh, these are non-communicable, so you don't get them from one person to other. You get them primarily because you may have the genetic risk for it you have the risk exposure. So, or you have lifestyle habits, like you smoke, you drink, um, you eat uh, food that is rich in unsaturated, you know, unsaturated fatty acids, um, um, too much non-vegetarian also is a risk factor now. Um, so all of these things affect your health negatively. And the chronic diseases these days, Diabetes, cardiovascular, obesity, hypertension, kidney issues, uh, your lung issues like COPD, et cetera, you know, uh, are all lifestyle diseases. So they're highly preventable. If you give your body that respite from all these exposures, um, your body is fully capable of healing itself. But we don't let it do mm -hmm. that. We keep continuously assaulting it. We eat three meals in a day, and every meal of ours can be problematic. Right. So how, how do you associate your function of head of discovery here? So what exactly is your role of head of discovery and then innovation in this context of so what you do? at my goal is to uh, keep abreast of what's happening, the in latest information that's coming in. What are the products uh, that are based on this particular information. How fast are they available to the user base here in India? And how we can acquire them on our own platform and make them available to our user base in, you know, maybe at their place. In, in It could be an app, it could be a device, it could be information, it could be a product. Um, Anything, but if so, it is... So to, you identify, you like, you provide a discovery service, if you will, from a software app uh, or a marketplace point of view. But uh, how do you address this uh, noise, right? You know, social media is full of yes. so many experts giving advice on what is good for you, your gut and hair and skin yeah. and everything. So how do you address that part? Thankfully, there are a, a lot, also a lot of, um, I wouldn't call them influencers. I would call them thought leaders, uh, especially from the research community, right? Who are now a little more savvy of the 
social media out there. There are a lot of people who are putting their information out on TED Talk, on YouTube channels. They're writing books. Um, so a lot of this information is now accessible in those formats. But we As also a, have these Instagram uh, influencers who who advise on all these things, right? And all these short videos. In fact, and they're easy to they catch on really fast. <laughs> right. I mean, it's easy to push it on a WhatsApp. So, yeah. so given that, uh, how do you handle this aspect? Because you also probably have to write on the same platforms to engage your audience, and there is so much of noise here. So. Uh, how do you ensure to differentiate a declutter for a, from a, for a user? We've just begun. So these are challenges that we are coming across. And um, as much as possible, we're trying to vet our information and put out information that we're absolutely sure of our sources, as well as, uh, in my case, personally, if I've tried something and it's worked for me, that's the information that I back. Or if I've come across consistent, good information from a particular source, that's the information that I share. Um, and you're right, this is this is a constant struggle. You know, it, it's something that we have to deal with every day. And you just, because it, that's a lot of noise. Being able to, being, Heard in that space is is hard. We're trying. Yeah. And uh, what is the focus area at this point in time? At this point, um, uh, non-communicable diseases, like I said, obesity, which is which it should be, you know, and some countries, I think, it's already being labeled as an epidemic and should be should that should happen globally. But so, but it, for you, focus. Is it global or right now focus is in Right now, we're, be we're beginning. We actually uh, just had a launch uh, uh, in Kochi on oh. 23rd September. Okay. And the mayor of Kochi town was with us. Um, and uh, so we are beginning small. We're beginning very local. Um, and uh, When you say local, is it uh, in native languages or is it in English? Uh... So the launch, a lot of things happened in Malayalam. <laughs> and right. I, I don't speak Malayalam. So that was interesting because a lot of the speakers were just looking at me and I was nodding. <laughs> so my team members were like, yeah, everybody was looking at her. And I was like, yeah, everybody was looking at me. That's why I was nodding. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so uh, it happened in local language, but uh, uh, our website is in English. Um, a lot of the team members are from Kerala. They speak the language. Right now, we are beginning there, but we do have plans to expand. Because uh, uh, we've brought on board some tests, which are already some technology providers that are already offering their services pan India. Some are uh, not in Kochi, but, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, specific to one city. So we'll have to expand there as well. Um, so we will, uh, so we are trying to begin small, begin local, and then gradually go from. So right now the aim is for a uh, cancer-free coaching. Hopefully we go to Kerala next and then, you know. So, uh, so essentially what you do at Preview is uh, you take up uh, lifestyle bone disease, like you mentioned, obesity, and uh, you make all the information available about it. And then also you make available the information of solution providers. Is that no, some kind of... A... We, have, we have on board uh, the uh, technology vendors. Like we have uh, on board a gut microbiome test. Um, uh, blood reports, we've not specifically tied up with any pathology lab because, you know, uh, people can go and get themselves tested at their lab. Gut microbiome test uh, with... Is it okay to ask what who's the partner there? Sure, it's a uh, leucine rich bio. They tested oh, all bugs. Okay, things. well, we've had their founder CEO as a guest, so I was just wondering about it. Okay, I I love working with Dr. Dhar. <laughs> okay, because again, he's a scientist, uh, not just in function, but also I think at in heart at, and mind. Speaks like poem. right, and for the audience, you can look up. Uh, uh, the podcast with 
uh, founder and CEO of Lucin Biorectors. Yeah. So um, he's very collaborative, you know. So I worked with him earlier also, and I saw the reports, and I, you know, some of the things that I was uncomfortable with, or I felt, you know, could do with the change. He's actually incorporated that feedback, and you know, he's changed his reports. Um, mm. But why do you feel the need for a preview in this market? There is a need for a preview uh, in this market, especially because uh, a lot of these diseases uh, are preventable early stages, when they're caught early. When they are detected, diagnosed later, by then a lot of diseases, like diabetes, for example, right? Uh, it's type one is your insulin is not getting secreted. Type two, your insulin is not being recognized, right? Type one is autoimmune and uh, in um, nature. Type two is lifestyle associated. And I will talk about type two because uh, uh, I'm not sure what I read or what I remember right now. It extends to type one, but um, especially for the Southeast Asian uh ethnicities, right? Uh, the age of onset is at least 10 years lower. Also the BMI numbers, right? You think of somebody who's fat may get obesity, may get diabetes. Uh, and so, so those BMI numbers could be 30 and above. But in, in Southeast Asian ethnicity, these BMI numbers are also lower. So they might not, so you know. Lower as in how much? Um, I don't recall. I'll have to look it up, but definitely lower. So, oh, it's, so the people Wait, are Southeast Asia would include India, then, or is it the South? Okay, would include. And the, this is true for people, you know, for also the diaspora people from these ethnicities. So, let's say you studies done in U.S. parallelly with Caucasian populations and Southeast Asian populations. The onset is much earlier. And so you're much, saying this is genetic. So that's why even if they're living elsewhere, it would still have a bearing. So there is that predisposition, which is why if you have the predisposition and if you have the lifestyle which is putting you at risk, catching it earlier is far more better than catching it later because diabetes will start with that insulin problem, but it will start affecting your other organs also, right? Your heart gets involved, your kidneys get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, your nerves get involved. No, but uh, there are players, there are uh, institutes and uh, organizations focused on diabetes alone. There are uh, there are multiple organizations focused at individual uh, things. So why do you think preview makes a better approach in this thing? Because they are all looked at as experts in that space, right? So we are also will... working. We are also working with the experts in the field. Yeah, but uh, do you see there is a need for consolidating or pulling everybody into one single uh, platform? Yes. Because if you're looking at something in isolation, you may overlook something that is impacting. So the likelihood of an obese person is high for con contacting uh, diabetes. Uh, diabetes. So, you, so in that context. Yeah, you can't look at it in just in terms of uh, weight. Mm -hmm. you also have to look at it in terms of metabolism you know what's happening mm -hmm. to you hormonally what's your gut microbiome doing? are there uh, you're the first in this space or are there other people doing something similar no we're definitely not the first and i don't think we're gonna be the last mm -hmm. but um we are we are i would say we are hoping to be different because we are trying to like put all of this information in one place we're trying to look at it more uh, holistically we're so, trying to but so far it's not in that manner is it um from india context a lot of people tend to then just focus on weight right okay right and then then they tend to focus on just losing the weight so the fitness that they achieve is more aesthetic fitness mm -hmm. What we are trying to go for with our transformation partner is medical fitness. Mm -hmm. So let's say you enroll in a program with us, right? We ask you for your blood reports. So if you have done undertaken your blood work, 
in let's say last three weeks you know we'll take that otherwise you can get one you know specified so to us so you say you address medical nutrition and also gym or i don't know is that workout oh, is that part of your so that's so, also part of it yeah when you look at look at health right and you you google pillars of health right most people start with four there are five there are six of you know more more are being added but the basic four are your nutrition your sleep your stress and your mobility uh, so your your program includes you measure sleep as well um we have recommendations on sleep hygiene Okay. you should ideally be trying to no, get no i think there are also some sleep products right yes. there's the there's math and so you also yeah. partner with them and you also eventually we will that's the plan we want to have your that both but things are... do you have a system to capture data from each of these individual exercises and you consolidate and keep it for one are, individual uh, you are looking at one particular platform which okay. will be able to capture all of this information and we are looking at right now we are in the process of customizing it for our needs no but uh, that would also mean working with all your partner organizations right each one works on their own tech stacks are different so how do you absolutely absolutely that's a, that's that which is why um, that's not something that i will be able to tell you more about right. but we do but it's a fairly that. complex thing to have it is, it is so that integration at the back end right but are there how- somebody like this internationally anywhere who's actually working with multiple vendors and got everything onto a single platform there are a lot of people who are trying this right now because being able to work with all of these individual technologies right in house is also a massive exercise yeah it's it's huge it's huge because then you will have to set up these individual i mean people do keep talking about that apple could be one of the biggest healthcare service providers because they have captured the risks of the people they have the phone They have the years, so they actually have a lot of data. Yeah. So, uh, so you will need a solid tech partner, someone like Apple, or Apple could be. I mean, how do you see this? Do you see Apple as a competition for you or a no. collaborator for you? My personal philosophy is that at least in a space like this, with the problems that we are trying to grapple with, the that we are trying to address, there is no space for competition. so you collaborate with everybody collaborate with everybody if you if we can work with you you know i would rather work with you than compete with you hmm. so i uh, i not look and there are players there i'm not saying we are the first ones we are the only ones i'm saying we are in the fray is it okay to talk to take names of those people who you think are aggressive in the market there are a lot of players that are aggressive in the market uh, but um i i'm not sure i want to be taking names mm-hmm. okay because um i think everybody starts out with a certain intent right and then the market forces decide how much of that intent gets executed right right, right. and to for me to say then that you know oh they started out like this they and they're not doing it like this is painting the wrong picture mm mm-hmm. Fair, fair. Okay, we'll we'll we'll. <laughs> Because there are a lot of health providers But, in this space. So apart from the technology and integrating each of your different collaborators' data, what other challenges do you see in this way in this space? You know, habits are hard to give up. You know, so it's it's hard to like one challenge you've already mentioned. There's so much noise. how do you get heard in that noisy space you know and say okay fine you know how do you become that voice of reason so that right. is definitely a challenge um but when you reach somebody and then you tell them that you know this is the information to be able to present that information in a format that is easily you know understandable by them and in the india context local language and also okay. being uh, being uh, uh comfortable with their yeah yeah one is colloquial but also see there is uh, india is a, it's also referred to as a subcontinent right in yes. its fair sense so the cultural differences are also significant 
Absolutely. So the dialect habits are different. So habits are different. Languages are different. You know, Hindi is as a language. You know, dialect changes every five kilometers is what I've heard. Um, yeah. You know, the names of veggies change. Right. So I'm from Delhi, and when I go to Bombay, um, sometimes telling the maid what to cook also becomes a challenge, right? So my thing is, you know, it's there in the refrigerator. If we bought it, we'll eat it. <laughs> just mm. take it up from the refrigerator, you know, and then tell me, okay, we call it this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, I so a lot of. So that's a big complexity in your business, then. It is, but thankfully, um, and this is where I think my role uh, becomes uh, exciting. Is looking for partnerships in this space also. So when you have a challenge, you know that's your problem statement. Looking for your solution statement is then you know becomes your role, right? How do you, you, this is your problem. How do you address it? Can you do it yourself? How do you do that? Are there people who are currently addressing similar problem and can you customize it? Can you work with them? Right. So when you use language, uh, at the moment, our team, you know, we have members that speak, you know, the local language and we've built in, in-house, we've built that database that among our team members, how many languages do we speak, you know? And how can can that be used? And I think this is as we start expanding, this is how we'll kind of bring in, you know, that that language aspect of it as well. Mm. Um, oh, so right now that, you are not focusing on build everything for English and then look at each of the languages, or parallelly you are looking at English and other Indian languages as well. I would say English and other other Indian languages. And since you bring this up, there is a startup which is. Um, which is again a buddy of mine uh, and it's two ladies and they have been in the mass communication space for the last 20, 30 years. And they recently started with, uh, it's called Shabd AI. Mm -hmm. Pradhan, you might want to speak to her. Sure. <laughs> uh, I recently spoke to her and um, what they are doing is uh, providing language support and local language support for people who want to get word out. Mm -hmm. in the you know um, i'm not sure if hinterland is the word is the appropriate word but to you know tier tier three tier four towns also or, or lately a lot of people talk about right talking communicating from india to bharat yeah but then you know i think recently that that conversation about india to bharat um, has in at least politically it politically, politically it's it's different. Different. politically it's it's changed. Very, that... yeah. but Bharat you know I think there is no single definition of Bharat out there so there is no one Bharat so then we have to know all these different Bharats right or be able to collaborate with all these different Bharatiyas and say mm -hmm. okay fine this is the message that we want to get out. So we, you want to not just look at the different Bharatiyas, but you also want to look at your mindset. Where is the, you know, so you, you find your own tribe. Mm -hmm. Even in this India. And wh what are the other challenges you see in terms of uh, uh, access to capital, the kind of infrastructure, are there policy, are there any... Uh, challenges or limitations or uh, that you a see lot of, yeah, a and lot skill of resource. Things, yeah. So from the science part of it, you know, because we are a science break backed company. So for us a lot of our things, a lot of our solutions, a lot of our problems start with the science. Hmm. It's evolving. A lot for a lot of it we don't have definite answers. The information is coming in, you know, to keep abreast of it, to keep, you know, uh, keep track of it, that's one. And to see how it pans out, mm -hmm. to see how it gets applicable, you know, and how early we can adopt it and how, you know, what sort of results we get. So there is a time constraint to it. Uh, there's also, you know, because there is a time constraint to it, there is a, um, so it's not immediate also. So we can't, let's say for funding, right? 
it has to be a long term kind of a thing there no immediate mm. return goes so then mm. getting that funding is also sometimes i think it's uh, i would say for a lot of people who are working in this space that is that is a challenge mm -hmm. what about resources are there uh, uh, good resources available or what kind of resources and another thing in from a resource and see you you are a uh, broadly a uh, western educated in, in approach and thinking though of course you did your phd in japan uh, but uh, uh, ayush is consolidating a uh, growing significantly in india with ayurvedic and uh, other alternate to the traditional western uh, um, medicine approach so how are you approaching it in your uh, preview is there a uh, are you open to it or are you those to it are you exploring it where do you stand on that or right, so personally i'm not opposed to ayush mm -hmm. but i would say you know uh, the korean system of alternative medicine or the chinese system of alternative medicine right it is not in fact thinking... i think i believe japan also has something like that right though yeah. it is uh, some people say it's modeled on chinese itself yeah uh, but they also have which is employed in, in their hospitals itself yeah. but uh, in india there is a clear distinction for uh, ayush and uh, ayurvedic as separate and so but my only issue with ayurveda is that it has not been put through that rigor when i speak to an a practitioner of ayurveda they will talk about their Sans the text in sanskrit but they don't you know make available that text to you you'll say it is in that book so that onus of you know going looking at that book uh finding that information whereas you know uh, any of your western medicine right that information is there on your website that access is there uh recently i think uh, quite a few years back um csir made this effort tkdl traditional knowledge uh, digital library uh i haven't had a chance to really look at it so i don't know how much of the information is there but a lot of these government portals they're so convoluted in terms of navigation that you can't ever get to the real information so i think that's a challenge of the design that maybe you know we can pick so up so for now uh, preview so, is but the information the way it is there yeah no go on i'm just asking so right now preview is not capturing or catering to this I couldn't. Uh, oh, I couldn't uh, catch what you were asking. Yeah, no. Right now, review is uh, not considering any Ayurvedic information when you cater to the customer. Is that how it is right now? No. So right now we're not, but we're also not prescribing any Western medicine. Okay. No, even we're the approach. You're still clear of that. No, but even the approach. The up. the approach is definitely science backed you know if it is if it uh, is backed by evidence if that is... okay no because diet right see there is a lot of dietary system in the ayurveda also but you are not looking at the uh, uh, ayurvedic dietary system either yeah so we are not looking at ayurvedic dietary system but we are definitely recommending the traditional way of eating okay you know if you been eating some if you you know if you if you I think the colloquial way of saying if your if your grandmother serves you, or if your grandmother recognizes a vegetable, you're safe enough to eat. Some mm. of our food combinations, the traditional food combinations, are very scientific. You mm. know, the mm. it's a North Indian combination of uh, dal, rice, and a dollop of ghee on top of it. Right. Right. The so, right of, uh how do you find in uh, support for your approach i mean do you see uh, traditional i mean the allopathy doctors and system medical system today they support what you're doing or uh, from a point of uh since it's a preventive approach to it uh, do you find them supporting you or do you find them criticizing you where do you stand in that sense of so the current I... ecosystem I just recently attended a three-day um, online conference on um, functional nutrition, functional medicine. So these are a lot of medical practitioners who are now looking outside of the 
allopathic practices and then they're looking at alternative therapies like ozone and oxygen uh, therapy um uh, ayurvedic uh, formulation they're looking at nutrition they're looking at uh, um you know um uh, the kerali practices and all of that stuff so they are looking at incorporating all of this in their protocols so as an organization right now we're too new to really comment on what kind of support we're getting but i would say that there is there is a change in the thought process now where when they're not just saying okay fine you have this disease take this medicine so you see a way to collaborate with them in future yes i do hmm. because I, uh, i i like i said you know in this space there is there is really no place for competition if somebody right. is really saying that you know i want to work towards good health so do you actually think our health system the popular medical health system that is currently available is actually going towards preventive care with the people that i saw i think it is it is okay uh, i was, but the thing is uh, see i think a lot of it is also individual driven right people are also getting sick and tired of that whole cycle of getting hospitalized getting tested getting medicines and then going again and again and again it's a negative spiral so they are also asking for more solutions out there is there something better so acute care is what the hospitals do well mm. chronic care is a space that we want to get into right so no but do you also see the avoided. current healthcare system going towards this it will have to right after at some point hmm. so you you already see that thinking is coming in that direction yeah, because a lot of people are now like when you step into a hospital right based on based on the time of the year they'll have different uh, standees you know with information on stroke and information but they want to get the awareness out there because they're getting jammed of you know full of patients if mm. they can you know and not all a uh, crowd is always not necessarily always good business right you want to have, you know you want to be able to take care of the people if you have too many people with saying okay fine who can't differentiate between panic attack anxiety acidity and a heart attack mm. and you have all of them sitting outside your cardiology wing how do you triage so the better information the better idea is to let these people know that you know these are your symptoms this is what you're experiencing come to us only when this happens so do you see this happening in the western world better or do you see it happening all across even west east everywhere it's happening all across okay it's definitely happening all across i just see it happening better in the us in the uk okay these people are more aware they have more resources uh, like i recently took up gardening right mm -hmm. and only then did i start learning a lot about carbon sequestration about organic practices about ecosystems that get set up micro ecosystems that get set up i started learning about soil microbiology now i've never taken microbiology in my academic training but when i was doing my phd because i started i was working on a bacterial system taking it to the human uh, immune system I, i went through that transition and uh, we and my thesis was on was on bacterial signaling so there is a certain bit of you know that seed was there and then you know when i started gardening and i started coming across these different um, you know microbes to be used instead of chemicals to be used then there was that whole information about soil microbiology so in the western countries at least they have access to resources right where they have larger land holdings and all of that stuff and they're able to do this better um i mentioned tim specter earlier right from zoe nutrition hmm. so they started with a citizen science uh, project where they were looking at um, a whole bunch of people who got their gut microbiome tested before they started the program and then there are a whole bunch of people who are foragers you know they are looking for food in the wild mm -hmm. and after a 3 month period of eating like this 
they are then getting their gut microbiome tested again to see how that largely plant-based diet impacted their guts. Mm. I don't see a project like that happening here in India. So who do you think should be driving it? Do you see this action coming out of entrepreneurs or is there a role for policymakers? Who who do you think should be uh, working on this to start? Everybody. <laughs> I mean, Everybody. to start, to start where should uh, the trigger come from? Or you see yourself like entrepreneurs, you do the start or do you need some kind of a support system coming from policymakers that... I'll give you one example. Uh, recently, uh, uh, and I'm naming names, uh, Rebut Hemat Singer, right? A uh, food farmer, he's on uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram handle. He posted something about board meter. And then oh, yeah, a, it made a big news, correct. He got a legal notice. Yeah. But he's not the first person to talk about labels, right? Hmm. He just did it in a manner which caught attention. Correct. Right? And then that snowballed. Hmm. It's one person doing something. And it's not one person doing something that has not been done before. Yeah, People it, it, it just about. went viral, right? It just went viral. So the start could come from anywhere. No, but this kind of an effort, uh, it's not like putting up a video, right? This is a sustained effort. It's a sustained effort. So um, have you seen um, the recent uh, documentary that came out on Netflix about the Blue Zones? No. I think Gwitner or I think it's B-O-E-T-T-N-E-R, uh, that's the person. Uh, he's been documenting these communities uh, worldwide for the last mm -hmm. 30 odd years. And um, these are people uh, in isolated communities in different uh, geographies where uh, the major uh, majority of the people live like really long, 90s, 100s, cross 100s and all of that stuff. So um, Okinawa and Japan, there was something near Tokyo, Greek, Greece, and all of that stuff. There was one in actually Loma Linda, California. So, you know, that was, to him, it was surprising. So he went and saw these people as in lived with them. And what kind of practices do they have? How do they eat? How do they move? You know, what kind of community uh, networks do they have? Uh, um, you know, what's their mental health like and all of that. And then his question, this documentary is designed really well. The first two episodes are about these communities. The second, the third episode is about uh, can these communities be re be created in other environments? Mm -hmm. How does that happen? So he recreated it in a small town in U.S., but he got the civic authorities involved. He got the people involved. So they started with a town hall, you know, where they invited all the members to come in and, you know, say, okay, fine. For this period of time, this is what we're going to be trying to do. Mm -hmm. And he kind of, you know, put some changes in place. And he's like, this is the outcome we are ex expecting. After a year, the outcomes were, you know, much better than what they'd expected. Mm -hmm. So they, they were like, so yes, it can be done. Mm -hmm. And then they've gone on to do that in more communities. And it has been a concerted effort between the citizens and the civic authorities, right? If you create safer, open, greener spaces for people, they will come out and move more, right? And, and you know, uh, we, we, and use, you know, safer models of, let's say, transport right they'll use public transport more instead of you know using their own individual cars they probably cycle more like a lot of these nordic countries because mm -hmm. they have those infrastructures in place they actually Correct. use their cycles more um, so as opposed to a lot of cities here in india which are getting more and more um industrialized mechanized built up mm. Right. So then infrastructurally, we're not creating that space. So, yes, the government will need to get involved. But as citizens, right, what are we doing? How are we contributing to that system? 
So if you were to give a shout out, right, to uh, anybody from a point of wanting to collaborate with you, yeah. uh, why don't you just use this platform and give a shout I, out to them? Yeah, so I am looking at anybody who, who you know, it. yes, we're focusing on health, right? We are focusing on uh, the science around the health. So we are looking at, uh, I'm, I'm from the life sciences industries background. So I do look at a lot of diagnostics. I look at a lot of technologies in this space. But if somebody is even from the, let's say, IT or IoT, you know, or, you know, let's say engineering background, right? Um, we can collaborate. We can, you know, kind of, right now we are onboarding and collaborating with people who have a product. Right. But if we see a specific need that maybe this should, you know, this should this should be a product, but it's not out there right now. Maybe we could make one together. Right. right? That's one part. Of it. Uh, as people to live healthy, it's not just the food that we eat and how we sleep. Stress is a big part of it. We've already discussed it. So I would love to speak with people who are in this space, you know, maybe who are uh, uh, in connect with different communities, maybe who are in connect with school children. Maybe uh, I think recently uh, there, there is a in, uh, there's a startup that got incubated at Nursel itself, which talks about uh, mental health of students. Right, um, so that is one. Uh, people who are working on um, other technologies, uh, like I, sometime back I came across somebody who is. Looking at sweat during sleep, and he's correlated that. Uh, so it's a it's a strip that goes under your um, bed sheet, and it's a very thin strip. It it's not disruptive in any way, but you kind of sleep, and it records data, and that data gets. Uh, uh, uploaded on a server somewhere, but the uh, the uh, spikes that you see um, are correlated with your risk of getting a heart attack. This is a very specific measurement, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you could actually look at it, if you could tie it up with you know a uh, a uh, uh, emergency service or a uh, you know a, a a hospital. So if you if you get enough of a not notice you don't come to a dead person in the bed, right? You're able so to... So basically, you, you, you say anybody who has a product or even thinking of a product, may not have a product, do reach out and we'll explore the ways of collaborating. We'll explore. Hmm. So not just technology, thoughts, ideas, you know. If somebody is doing something in food... Yeah. You know? So, technology, food, nutrition, uh, any way something connected with uh, health yeah. uh, or uh, fitness, yeah. and uh, and also perhaps uh, communication because you also want to work with uh, people with understanding of these in their yeah. languages. Yeah. Yeah. So wonderful! Yeah. All the one communication in this space, and I would like to be even more. Um, the challenge that I find is that I want to communicate my message, the importance of it, without losing the science of it. And, you know, right now, the way I speak is too jargon rich sometimes or not enough jargon rich. I don't know. I'm getting I'm also a little confused person these days. But the fact is that that challenge is there. How do you say truth to, to the science? But how do you make it understandable so that, you know, this message gets relayed that, yes, you need to do something. Right. This is a something that we can help come up with. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, to the audience and listeners, the coordinates are there, uh, rather the links are there right below this uh, podcast. So you can uh, reach out to her, you can uh, follow the kind of work, and also uh, connect, engage, start talking, and uh, uh, you don't know how to collaborate, but I guess something can arrive out of the conversation. So just connect. A conversation always helps, right? Uh, because uh, you learn, right? 
and that is always always <laughs> so do reach out there and uh, and also follow and uh, also if you think you have somebody in your circle who may find this more useful please share this conversation with them as well so that they can also get in touch and uh, all the links are there right below this podcast so since well, you mentioned uh, sharing yeah. it with somebody who may need it uh, one of our focus is on cancer cancer is a non communicable disease um, it has a genetic component so there is predisposition um we have on board a test which is a multi cancer early detection test problem with cancers is that by the time it gets detected it's too aggressive it's taken roots in the body and fighting it is really hard it's costly the in, the access to information is also already a challenge the access to treatment diagnostics are also challenging so if you have history of cancer in the family if you have family members who passed on or are currently suffering from cancer um we have a test for people that can detect cancer at stage 0 currently the cancers that are being detected are detect- being detected at the earliest is stage 1 by then that cancer is 1 cubic centimeter in size it's a 1 billion cells population we are able to detect it much earlier than that. this is not our test we have a techno- we have a partnership with the test provider it's currently available only in mumbai uh but it's not that expensive and for the peace of mind that is afforded um a flight to bombay is also not that expensive so if you well the to- company is preview the url is right yes. below this so please look that up as well and uh, reach out to them yeah please do because this will save you a lot of peace of mind knowing cancer knowing about the cancer much in advance will give you so much time to actually take care of it wonderful right thank you thank you so much uh, and uh, yeah so if you're not yet subscribed to future fast do it now and once again join us soon uh, come back uh, we're going to uh, get more thoughts on her perspectives on future and uh, also some on the prediction so till we meet again enjoy the ride pratiba once again thank you so much for being part of future fast i've been enjoying it so far so thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs>